Welcome to Algorithms with Professor Caleb. Today I'd like to talk to you about bubble sort. So the basic idea behind bubble sort is that we're going to go through the array and look at neighbors in the array. If the two neighbors are out of order, we're going to swap them or exchange them. Note that bubble sort is also sometimes called exchange sort because it's all about looking at these neighbors and exchanging them if they're out of order. A little more precisely, we're going to have a nested loop. The outer loop is going to control the amount of the array we look at in each pass, while the inner loop is going to walk us through the array looking at these adjacent values to see if they need to be swapped. So let's see what this looks like with an example. So here we have an array. On our initial pass, we're going to need to go through the whole array looking at each pair of neighbors. So we start by looking at the items at index 0 and index 1. Those are out of order, so we're going to swap them. Then we move on to indices 1 and 2. Again, it's out of order, so we swap those. We look at 13 and 2. Those are again out of order, so we swap. Then we have 13 and 15. This time they're not out of order. So we're going to move on to the next pair, 15 and 10. Those are out of order, so we swap. And then we look at 15 and 5 at indices 5 and 6. Those are out of order, so we swap. And finally, we look at 15 and 12 at indices 6 and 7. Again, those are out of order, so we swap. So here we are at the end of the first pass. And the last item, the largest item in the array, has what we call bubbled up or bubbled to the end so that it is now guaranteed to be in place. So for the rest of the sort, we're going to ignore that value. So that brings us to our second pass. We do the same basic thing, just going to the next to last pair. So the seven and nine, or in order, they don't need to have anything done to them. We look at the 9 and 2 at indices 1 and 2. Those are out of order, so we swap them. We look at the 9 and 13. Those are in order, so that stays the same, and we move on to indices 3 and 4, the 13 and the 10. Those are out of order, so we swap. 13 and 5 are out of order, so we swap those. And finally, 13 and 12 are out of order, so we swap those. And at this point, we know that the 13 is in place. It has bubbled to the end of the part we're looking at. So again, we're going to ignore that part. And in the next pass through the outer loop, as we go through the whole inner loop, we'll limit ourselves to looking at the items in indices 0 through 5. Next pass, we start at indices 0 and 1 again, those are out of order, so we swap the 2 and the 7. 7 and 9 are in order, so we ignore them. 9 and 10, the same, but we swap the 10 and the 5. And then we look at the 10 and the 12, those are in order, so that's fine. So at this point, we have the last three items in place. So let's take a look at what this basic code looks like. This is what we call naive bubble sort. We have two for loops. The outer loop is going to run from length minus one down to one. This is going to control where we stop, how much of the array we're going to actually look at on each pass. The inner loop will run through from zero to i minus one. The inner loop has to look at pairs, so it's going to stop at the next to last item in the section of the array that we're actually looking at. So then with each of those pairs, we compare the item at J and the one after it, the other part of the pair. If they're out of order, then we do that swap. So let's keep going with our example. And we're going to see that we have a bit of a problem. So let's continue fourth pass. We compare the two and the seven. They're in order. Seven and nine are fine. Nine and five need to swap. Nine and ten are fine. So we're now 
here with 10 through 15 in place. Then on the fifth pass, two and seven are in order, five and seven are not, so we swap them and check seven and nine, those are in order. So at this point, the last five items are in place. But we can actually see that all the items are in place. Bubble Sword doesn't know that, and it's going to run two more passes before it says, oh, we're done, as long as we're using the naive version. So how can we fix this? How can we do a little bit better? The idea that we're going to implement is to keep track of whether we made any exchanges and stop the outer loop when no exchanges are made. Now in our particular example, this isn't going to help much. It's going to just save us one last pass. But there are other situations where an array is very much in order when we start, doesn't have a whole lot to fix, and so that may end up having us stop quite a bit earlier. So as we look at our bubble sort code, we're going to improve it by adding this Boolean variable exchanged, and we're going to start it out as true here because we need to do things. We're going to add a check in our outer for loop that says, hey, did we exchange last time? If we did, we're going to go ahead and keep going, but if we didn't, we'll go ahead and stop right away. Then before we go into the inner loop, we're going to change exchanged to false, saying haven't exchanged anything yet on this pass. Then we'll go through as usual, except anytime we actually do a swap, we're going to set exchanged to true. As long as we made a change in the previous pass through the outer loop, previous run through this for loop, then we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. As long as we haven't come to the end, we still have our i greater than zero check. But if at any point we get through here and we never needed to exchange anything, then we know that that means the array is already sorted and we can go ahead and stop. So let's look at the performance. And here we're going to look specifically at improved bubble sort performance. Do not ever implement naive bubble sort. Naive bubble sort is a bad idea. Improved bubble sort is not the best idea, but it's at least reasonable. So the array is going to start in reverse order for our worst case. That's the absolute worst we can do for bubble sort. So in the first pass, we're going to do n minus 1 comparisons for our n minus one pairs of neighbors in this size n array. And we're gonna swap every single time because if we started in reverse order, we're gonna to have to do all of those swaps. The next pass, we're gonna do n minus two comparisons and swaps because that last item was already in place. The next one, n minus three comparisons and swaps. When we get down to the next to the last pass, we're going to do two comparisons and swap them. And the final pass will be the last pair of items that are still out of order, and we'll swap those. Note that naive bubble sort will always do all of the comparisons, no matter what, whether they're swapped or not. This is how many comparisons naive bubble sort always has to do because it never stops early. However, swaps, it will only do the same amount that the improved version will do. So in this worst case, let's add all of that up. We have n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3, and so on down to 3, 2, 1. So from math, we know that if we take n plus n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 and so on down to 1, that the result of that is n times n plus 1 over 2. Now we don't start at n, we start at n minus 1, but we could just plug in n minus 1 for n, and we're going to end up with n times n minus 1 over 2. So that's n squared minus n over 2, which in big O terms, when we use our asymptotic notation, we have big O of n squared. Now in the average case, we're going to end up with about half as many comparisons and swaps. Now, remember, this is for the improved bubble sort. 
Naive bubble sort will always do all of those comparisons. It will do fewer swaps, but all the comparisons. This will be a lower constant factor, but it's still big O of n squared. Now, in the best case, and again, this only applies to improved, the array is already sorted in the correct order. We just presumably didn't know that was true, or we wouldn't be bothering to run the algorithm at all. So in that case, of course, we're going to have no swaps with either algorithm. With our improved version, we're going to do n minus 1 comparisons, that comparisons from that first pass, which will discover no swaps were needed, and stop the algorithm. So that's a big O event. So hopefully that gives you a decent idea of what bubble sort is all about. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.